training, um, so you're not going to see any chat or anything in this one. But I just wanted to make it a little bit nicer for the folks that didn't get to join us since it was a holiday when we had the original one. Um, this session, we're going to be talking about our animated GIFs. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is our burst mode GIFs. So what those are going to do is it's going to take a live view recording for a few seconds, and it's going to break it down into individual photos. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to do more action shots. So even with the regular animated GIFs where it's going to take the four photos and play them in sequence to make it kind of action-like, this is actually going to be very action-oriented. So you can see you were on the walkthrough part one. We used Mike as our example here. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of what the burst mode GIFs are going to look like at the end. They're actually pretty easy to set up. So if we go into our social group configuration, and we go over to animated GIFs, all you really need to do is enable the animated GIFs and then enable the burst mode. So again, pretty easy. Um, the one thing to keep in mind with burst mode GIFs is that it's only going to work with the GIF overlay. So just about everything else on this screen, um, the burst mode is not going to be active as of now. So if you want, we can do an example. Let's go ahead, we'll hit save and start. Um, I always use my dogs as my example, so here we go. Change the button. Oh, let's go back green screen on, but it's okay, we'll ignore that. So you action shots, maybe the camera. So then you can see what it's gonna spit out here at the end. It's going to be your action shot gift. So you can go ahead, you can see me moving the camera. Again, I'm very good at all these examples right here. Um, just like a normal gift, you can share uh, email, Facebook, Twitter, or text. So I don't have email and text enabled right now, but you can share via all four. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit done. So that's kind of a quick overview of the burst mode gifts and how to do it. Like I said, there's not really much content for burst mode because it's actually pretty easy to set up. Let's go ahead and hit done. And the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be your animated backgrounds and your animated overlays. Um, so with these, we're going to go ahead. This is a, these are going to be our examples for these on the top. You can see these are the animated backgrounds, and you're going to use that with green screen. So your print for green screen is going to have those static backgrounds that either the guest chose or you programmed in or or whatnot. And then it's going to remove those backgrounds for the animated GIF and place in your animated background. Overlays are going to be a very similar thing. Um, it's just going to play over the photo, so you don't have to have green screen for that. With both of these, you can still use your static overlay, that regular, you can see it here, that photo booth solutions overlay. So if we're going to be doing um, the animated overlay, for example, the snow one here, it's going to be your photos the animated overlay, and then that static overlay. You can see the snow going behind the Photo Booth Solutions logo there. Um, with all of these, your regular uh, customization options are still in play. So you can do the frame delay, you can change the speed. So the lower the number, the quicker it is. I like it about 36, but uh, we've heard some our, from our other people, 25, some others have said, you know, a minute and a half. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just what you like. So you can do the static overlay, which is going to be your transparent PNG. It's going to be 600 by 400 pixels, and that's going to go on top of the photo. You can make the GIF square, so it's going to give it kind of that Instagram feel. And to go along with that, you can also uh, check the box to change. It's going to switch your uh, GIF file into an MP4. And then it's also going to replay that file. So that way we can meet that five second requirement for Instagram. So I think it plays about four or five times depending on your speed. And then um, in order to enable the animated background or the animated overlay, because you can either do one or the other, you're just gonna check which one it is. So you're gonna tell it in which section to layer it. And then you're gonna link out to the frames. Um, so you're just going to put the folder path in there. We've got the dance version in there for you already. Um, you can also do a custom filter for the animated GIFs. So you can do any of the custom filters that you've got on the photos, um, except for completely custom, so your Photoshop file, your Droplet file for right now. 
Um, but any of these other filters you can use. You just have to enable them over here on the filters tab, and it will apply it to all the GIFs. It's not a selection like it is on the photo. So it's either kind of a yes or no for your entire event type of a thing. So let's go ahead. We can do um, an animated overlay example first. So you're going to select your file. Our basic ones are in C, Program Files, Photo Booth Solutions, and then the Social Booth folder. We're going to go into Assets, and then GIF Overlays. We hid them very well. So let's go ahead and do the spider. Go ahead and click OK and hit Save and Start. And uncheck those. We're just going to click Save and Start. We're going to show you an example real quick. I do have green screen still enabled because you can do the overlay with green screen as well, but the backgrounds will stay your photo background. And I always just throw a little bit of stuff in here in the photos just so I can make sure that I can see it. You can see now we've got our print that pops up, and then it's also going to be applying that overlay to the GIF right now. My computer is a little bit slow, one, because I'm recording, but I've also got about 17 different programs open right now, um, so you've got that. But it does take a little bit of processing power for the over for the over animated overlays and the animated background. So you can see we've got our creepy little spider walking across the photo right now. So that's going to be our animated overlay for this one. It's going to be the creepy little spider. Um, let's go ahead and talk about how we get these animations, right? So I found something and I'm, you know, how do I go from there? So I found this video online. I just uh, Googled free videos, free video download, I think it was. And I found this one. It's an MP4. It's about 15 seconds long. So you can see it's just kind of what a pool would be, you know, the, the lines in the water of a pool. So I thought that was kind of cool. But I've got a video that's great, but now how do I get it split up into my PNGs, into those um, animation files that I made? If you look, we do have um, in our software, in the, in the program files that we were playing with it, Creepy Little Spider. Let's go ahead and pull that open and we can see exactly what we're looking for the end result to be. So I always double check um, the built-in ones just to double check my sizes and whatnot. So if you look, we've got our PNGs, we've got 12, that was our creepy little spider walking. What it's going to do is it's going to take them and split them up for each of the photos. So we've got 12 files in here, we have four photos. So one, two, and three were on that first photo, four, five, and six were on that second photo, and so on. Um, so what we're going to do is look to take that video and split it down into these separate PNGs. So our output, we need to be 600 by 400 and PNG files. So I was Googling and I found a free video to JPEG converter, which is great, right? So I went out ahead and downloaded that. Um, it's actually pretty easy to use. You hit add files and you select your video. And then you tell it how you want it to pull the frames. So you can have it pull every frame over here on the right or every so many frames or every second or how many total frames. And it's going to split that out for you. So you just hit convert and it's going to spit you out a file. It's going to look like this. It's going to have all of your frames. Um, these are going to spit out in the same dimension that the video was in and it's going to spit out in JPEG. So there's a few things that we need to do. One, we need to edit our size. So I always just use paint. It's pretty easy. Right click to choose edit. Uh, once it opens, you can click up here, resize. I want it in pixels and since it's not the same aspect ratio, I'm going to uncheck that and I want it to be 600 by 400. So you just hit OK and save. Um, you know, not the simplest process. I'm sure there's a way that I could make it so that it does it automatically in Photoshop or something like that. But it's pretty quick and easy, um, especially when you're only looking at a couple of files. 
if you were doing one with, say, 80 backgrounds, um, I would probably figure out a way to animate that. Like I said, I know it could be done in Photoshop. Um, it just was easier and quicker to do it manually for me than to actually write the Photoshop droplet. So now I've got my JPEGs and I want them to be PNGs. So the easiest way that I found is pull them up in Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that and then just do a save as and just save them as a PNG. Um, it's going to be pretty quick. Again, in Photoshop, if you were doing that droplet, I'm sure you could write it as a save as and it would do it all for you. Um, what we're going to do is look at the folder of the ones that we're actually going to use. So it's going to be all the right size. It's all going to be PNGs. And then we're going to do a quick little example so you guys can see kind of the final output. And then I think that's going to be it for this training. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to pause the recording real quick while I switch these over to PNGs and I will be right back. animated background now so you can see it's going to take the four shots we still got our print template selected once it runs through those it's going to go ahead and create our animated background and you can see the resolution got a little funny I had to adjust some so it looks a little different. We have to flip to a different computer. I'm now thinking we probably should have done this example with one shot, you guys. Better for work. <laughs> So now it's going to go ahead and finish up processing. And one of your options would be here on the last screen, this last review screen, you could say creating your animated GIF or processing your photos that have been shot. That would always be an option as well, so that way your data knows what's going on. There you go. Are you ready? Are you getting excited? I'm getting excited. It's going to work really cool. You can see the background is animating those water lines for us. So it's really cool. It's not too much work. Um, the perceived value for this is huge, though, for a client, you know, to be able to completely customize both the print and the animation. So you could probably charge, I would say, a couple hundred bucks for this, or, you know, throw it in for a perceived upgrade of $200, with really not so much work on your end. If you guys have any questions on the animated gifts or any of the um, animations and how to do that, we're absolutely happy to help. Shoot us an email at support at Have a great day.